I am a poet, and you may not believe the uh, range of different circumstances and settings in which that is an absolute conversation killer. <laughs> so what does that mean? Um, I get to travel around the world writing poems, performing poems, and helping other people to write and perform poems. Um, what that also means is that I'm really invested in creating spaces for people to value their own creative self-expression. I'm really invested in creating spaces for people to listen to each other and be heard. Um, this evening, I have two of the poets that I work with with me, and I'm going to very quickly get out of the way and have them take the uh, center stage. And I'm going to start with uh, Amal Saeed. Please welcome her. <laughs> Hi, um, this piece that I'm going to read to you is called Close the Body Down. One, Mama says, change your name, get a new passport, run. When a man puts his hands on you, when he calls to tell you that he'll burn the house down after you've kicked him out, Mama tells me that she wants to stick a knife into the center of her chest while I'm folding the laundry. She has stashed notes in an old scarf, has put it behind my bookshelf. She says, make sure you read and get your degree so that you never have to think about running. She told me once about a woman back home in the village who adorned herself in all of her jewelry, waited patiently for the soldiers. She was so sure that they would take the gold and make themselves rich. But they took turns Laughed at, her, laughed, at her, laughed at her attempts. She could not touch her skin the first night. Two, the blood dripped from between thighs. You carried your body into a bathtub and did not know where to begin the scrubbing. A hurt crept in, refused to leave, and there was no easy way to pick up a telephone to tell somebody about how black your heart was, how heavy your limbs. Mama says, Cut it off. Cut the vagina off, and you'll be safe. Girls ruin so easy, she says. One wrong turn into an alleyway leads to a lifetime of running when you see a man. Woman without desire is holy. No hands where they should not be. No midnight calls to the boy when she thinks you are sleeping, begging him, please marry my daughter, please make this right. Nobody in a hospital bed turning away from God. The boy hung up, told her to trap somebody else. When he entered your body, left the doors wide open behind him, made so much noise in your hallways, broke the cups in the cupboards, tore down your wallpaper, promised to never visit again. You swore you'd change the locks, but you kept the doors open anyway, hoping he'd become warmth soon. Mama didn't show you how to close your borders. So many men passed through, and you watched them all. The last one brought all of his suitcases, made copies of the keys, came back even when she told him to die. Three. Mama whispers, don't act brave when the men come. Don't you dare open your door, change your name, get a new passport, run. Thank you. It's the first time I've clapped myself on the stage. <laughs> I'm Antosh Wojcik, Wojcik, that's how I should say my name. <laughs> um, breathing you all in. Ooh. This is for whenever you've been lost, or you've been the person who's watching someone get lost, and you're there with all your body and all your limbs and everything in you, and you're like, I can catch you, I can show you the way, but that's not the right thing to do. <laughs> um, if you could all take a deep breath in with me. 
We all started in the same place. Emily, you're with me under the table, deaf eavesdropping the Polish our grandparents didn't teach us. You're with me in Texas, painting the fish tank with the green that we stole from outside. You're with me, loving the lack of breathing supplies. You're with me, eating lungs that we thought were wings. You are with me, hoping that you can just breathe. You're with me, feeding your hand into the VCR's teeth so we can watch your life so far on screen. You are with me, crying a roller coaster. You are with me, throwing sky hammers, hoping to knock each raindrop back into the above. You are with me, treading amber-washed back street, hoping to sink before home. You are with me, promising that you will still sing. You are with me, pulling bike spokes out of our voice boxes as we mock the car accidents and they're just doused in WD-40. You are with me as we crop circle our corpses, spotting UFOs and our brother just takes pictures of the sky. You're with me in the morning white noise when I am astronaut bones hanging in gravity noose. You're with me, accompanying sex with honky-tonk piano. You're with me when dad comes stumbling in, asking how many fish fingers for dinner. You are with me in a room full of people that you invited, weed whacking, their neon sign faces contoured to describe their naked. You are with me, drowning your bedroom with bricks. You are with me, jumping through the sunroof because it was a light pool that we could swim in. You are with me, petting your first tank of gasoline. You are with me, holding your first bouquet of shotguns for Valentine's. You are with me, when mum can't stop herself from tooth toothbrushing time plaque off of grandma's plaque, indented with her love titles, her start to finish bloomed out of her ash. You are with me when I leave you underneath the sky self-destruct with the self-medicated bomb squad who know how glass breaks and how you can be happy in that moment and their splinters speak happy and falling into your skin and I watch you a walking suicide attempt. And I know that you still eat donuts. That not all of you is a cappella bones stuck in flash grenade pills. Song still stuck in your palm. Your outreach hands mistaken for waving goodbye. Thank you. <clears throat> So yes, the settings in which I, um, I, I kill conversations by introducing myself as a poet. Um, I do a lot of work in schools, and sometimes when I go into those schools, um, there's that kind of rapturous and warm welcome. Hey, you're a poet, come in, work with us. We love poetry. And then there's the other end of the scale, uh, where I will uh, 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 turn up at a school, and I will hear something along the lines of, ugh. Are you the poetry guy? <laughs> I don't like poetry, therefore I do not like you, and I'm not doing any of this. Uh, this was the experience that faced me when I turned up at a school that I was going to be working in for another six month period. Um, I'm actually glad for those experiences, because through those experiences I've seen the most fantastic and powerful transformations happen taking people who begin a process by saying, I don't like poetry and I can't do it, to people who literally, through that time, rewrite themselves and their assumptions of themselves. So this poem that I'm going to share with you is dedicated to some of those people that I've worked with, some of the teachers who create the spaces for me to be able to go in and work with those young poets, and the poem is entitled Dumb. 
There's a girl in class who refuses to speak. Behind her back, a teacher mouths problems at home. And who knows what too large or brutal vision stole the engine of her voice. Today, in class, the challenge is to write about the things that we believe. The windows look out on open school grounds, and already before I've begun to speak or even know their names, they're out there. Out on the pitch or up in the clouds, anywhere but here. Their teachers have said that this is a valuable opportunity to learn. But ask the boy with his head down on a desk as if its surface is a requisite for breathing. Or the three girls squealing something I don't understand, and the rest of them proclaiming boredom, a preference for the rock club project up the hall, hangman, anything, anything other than this, anything other than poetry, because poetry means writing, and writing's long, man. <laughs> so say the ones that can be bothered to speak. Uh, we're the dumb kids, sir, says one. Why did they give you to us? Now, before the end of this lesson, the girl that lacks patience to raise her hand before speaking will come to describe herself as a jukebox. A broken jukebox in the corner of a room that no one listens to, faulty, inside out, and forgotten in the widening fissure between her parents. The boy with a desk for a face, He'll come to describe depression in a black and beautiful light, detailing a warm, dark pool that whispers your name. I'll scribe for a boy who will refuse to write. Ask him questions and take his answers down. Bangladesh, a red Honda generator, how there's nothing like family, nothing like home, even in stifling heat when the aircon kicks out. I'll read back his words to see the clean, unarguable flame behind his eyes, how he's never heard himself sound like this before and never thought it would sound so good. And still that girl in class, she refuses to speak. Praise her fierce and stubborn silence. Somewhere else in the world, Rain will fall on dry land for the first time in months. And I want to know what her first words will be.